Hi there. Glad you're able to join us. I just wanted to share with you really a very brief idea about one unique aspect of the holiday of Purim based on the Pachet Yitzchak. He brings down, they say, you know, there's a Chazal, our sages say that when Mashiach comes, all of the major festivals will stop to be observed except for one, which is Purim, which is kind of unique because you would think that Purim, which is a relatively minor holiday, why would that continue forever? And yet all of the major holidays like Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot are going to cease to be observed. So to understand this puzzling teaching, the Pachad Yisak brings a mashal, a parable, about two people who are given the task of having to identify their friend at night in the dark. One of them had a flashlight, the other one didn't. So for the one with a flashlight, it was easy enough to shine his light, see the face, and identify his friend. Whereas the one who didn't have a flashlight, he had to use his active listening to hear, to use talents that he didn't have prior in order to be able to identify his friend through listening to the conversation or to hear his footsteps. So in the morning, when the light came, according to this parable, just finishing it off, when the light of day comes, so obviously the one with the flashlight is not needed anymore. And the one who was able to identify the friend through active listening that talent that he developed, it's, it remains with him. Keep that idea in mind for just a minute. I just want to share one other aspect, and then we'll pull the two things together. You know, in the Jewish calendar, when it needs to be a leap year, so we add an extra month in the month of Adar, which is the month of Purim. So we make two Adars. So the question then becomes, when there's two Adars, when do you make Purim? In the first Adar or the second? So normally you would think it should be in the first month of Adar because we have a halacha, we have this idea that anytime you have a mitzvah commandment, you're supposed to do it as soon as possible, not to wait. And yet by Purim, there's this unique aspect that we do put it off and we wait till the second month. The question is, why is that the case? So they answer and they say, one of the answers anyways, is to make a point about the relationship between the redemption of Egypt and the redemption of Purim. That just like uh, the redemption of Egypt is dominated by the word Anochi, where do we see that? Because the verse says, Anochi Hashem Elokech, I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. There's also an idea of Anochi in, in Purim as well. When it says, when God says, Anochi, I am the Lord your God who will surely conceal myself from you. You know, the Gemara says that uh, when they ask in the Gemara, where is Esther's name found in the Torah? So it's in that Pasuk of Anochi Hashem Elokech that I'm God and I'm going to hide my face from you. Because the word hiding, astir, is the same letters as Esther. So there's two Anochis. So what's the lesson of the two Anochis? So there's two ways to be able to identify and to recognize Hashem. Okay, so hear this and then we'll come back to the Mashal. So the first Anochi is Yitziat Mitzrayim, is the exodus from Egypt. Because that's Anochi, that's Hashem, which was revealed. It was clear. Everybody saw it. All the miracles. I brought you out of Egypt. Everybody saw. So that's like the person in the mushal who was identifying his friend with a flashlight. The light of Mitzrayim was so clear. Everybody saw it. The second Anochi, the second way to recognize Hashem is our ability to recognize Hashem, the Anochi, when he's concealed, when he's hidden. To see Hashem in the world even when it's not so evident just like the special talent of that person at night who was able to train his ears. So we can conclude and say that, that when the night of exile is very bright and the light of Mashiach is there, it's so glaring and so clear, so we don't need the light of the holidays. And that's why the Chazal say that the holidays will be stopped to be uh, being observed. But the exception is Purim. And the unique aspect of Purim is that the special talent that we developed what was the talent? And we re were able to recognize Hashem as He's concealed within history. That's Purim. When we're able to see, just like in the Megillah itself, God is not revealed in the Megillah. His name isn't even mentioned. It just looks like a series of, quote, natural events. So when we can develop this talent to be able to recognize Hashem concealed in history, then that remembrance of knowing Hashem will never be forgotten. There's the, you know, they say that there's two lights. There's the, the, the God is my light, and there's also, though I sit in darkness, God is my light. So there's one, the light of God, which is like Pesach, revealed. And there's Purim, the aspect of Purim, which is Hashem, which is concealed. But that's the uniqueness of Purim, 
is it brings the light which breaks through the darkness. So I wish each and every one of you should have a special holy day of Purim with lots of light and a Purim Sameach. Thank you.